to send questions to ask the panelists and I will do my best to share them with uh, our, our panelists today. And uh, we will get started. I'll start with some, a little introduction about uh, what you're seeing. This, this is a format that uh, in this current format we're using, you see just myself, your host, your presenter uh, this week, it's Dr. Si Chung and her special guest who she will introduce. We see a list of your names uh, and we can hear from you if you use the chat window. So you're welcome to give that a try right now. Uh, during the presentation, I'll be monitoring that window and sharing it with the group. So welcome to, uh, thir to today's presentation. This is Thursday, April 9th. It's the April 9th edition of RBC at Home. My name is Kim Goff and I'm a learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. I'm coming to you from my home on the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking people here in Esquimalt. Like many of you, the staff of the museum have been asked to stay home during this pandemic. And in this series, we will explore what that looks like. We are visiting with members of staff uh, and the curatorial and collections areas. And we're going to discover how they do their work, how their work might be reflected in their homes in some cases, and possibly even what they're working on now. Today's presenter is Dr. Si Chung. Si Yi is the curator of history and is a cultural and social historian with broad interests, including transnational migration and working with communities. In 2016, while working on the Royal BC Museum's feature exhibition, Families, Bonds and Belongings, she met the Guichon family, including those two members who are joining us here today. Welcome everyone. Thank you. <laughs> si Yi, over to you. Okay, I'm going to first start sharing screen and then start the PowerPoint. Exactly, thank you. All right. Um, first of all, thank you so much for joining us here. I'm really honored to be in the company of, of course, our lovely host, Kim and uh, two members of the Gishan family that I worked closely with. One is Ms. Helda Rose, and the other one is Ms. Carolyn Gishan Pierce, who is in Alberta, and Helda is in Vancouver. So I'm going to um, talk briefly, hopefully really brief, <laughs> for about at least um, uh, no more than 10 minutes, uh, about the origin of the research of the family history and then I will um, um, get Carolyn and Hilda to talk about their experience of working with our, uh, our museum about their family history. So um, first of all, um, the Royal BC Museum put together an exhibit called the Gold Rush exhibit for 2015. And that exhibit was a really interesting experience in that we were trying to really explore this uh, event in 1858 onward to see how um, today's BC and Canada was shaped by that very significant event. And what has dawned on me when I was doing my research was that very few non-mainstream families we would, were we able to trace back all the way to the Gold Rush era because most of the political leaders' families and um, mainstream families that we were able to find records and um, descendants, but um, in, term, in terms of the non-mainstream ones, it was not very easy. And um, in that sense, we, uh, I spoke to some of the, the community members and um, fam, uh, historians and um, so Maurice Gibbard of the Francophone Historical Society of British Columbia and um, Professor Jim Barman both uh, recommended the early um, Francophone ranchers who played a really important role in working with the land in this interior in the early days before it was BC. So one of the families that was identified, the main family was uh, the Guichang family. And um, Professor Jim Barman at the time already did some research and I think um, Maurice did as well. Um, so then um, I was then connected with um, her honor at the time, the 
uh, Lieutenant Governor of the time was uh, Miss Judy Skishang, and she connected me with the family. She also provided a lot of her important perspective in terms of what she sees, the family values and the history war. And from there, I spoke to Mr. Hilda, uh, Mr. and uh, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Um, Guy and Hilda Rose. And also uh, the last survivor at the time of the third generation, which was um, Bernard Gishang. And he insisted that we call him Uncle Bernie. And, uh, and then I was connected with Carolyn, who is um, uh, more of a family history keeper of the family. So what's really significant about the Gishang family history was that um, the descendants um, from um, two main branches, what the former Lieutenant Governor Judith Gishang called um, the potato Gishangs in the coastal area and the potato, I'm sorry, uh, and then the beef um, Gishangs in the interior um, who were the ranchers. So their, um, they, their stories uh, were quite extensive. And so far we've worked closely with the ranching side of the family and then I've, um, since um, we did the exhibit, I also visited the potato Gishangs and they are, um, the descendants are still farming potatoes in the, in the Delta area. So, um, so um, during the gold rush era, um, the Gishang family was one of the very few um, that started, um, but, um, at the beginning, they, they started working uh, as packers. And only later that they, in uh, about uh, 1866 to 1867, uh, they came upon the grassland and started ranching in 1873. And uh, this is an image from Hilda that's um, 30 miles from the Kilchina in late November. Um, and um, so this is the image of the first generation Skishan, which is, um, so Joseph married um, Josephine and they were the, uh, they were the start, they, they were the starter of the, the ranching side. And Laurent married um, Perron, who uh, later moved to the lower mainland and started um, farming. So this is the image from Hilda again. Um, but um, th this is um, still standing today in today's Port Gishan um, and Laurent, Laurent's um, descendants are where the Laurent's family still farm um, the potato fields. So um, Lawrence um, Peter Gishan, the oldest of Joseph's um, seven children, the second generation, he's the one on the left here. He ran the Gishan Ranch from the time he was 14 years old. Um, and his father, Joseph, pursued other interests. And then he formally ran it from 1918 to 1957. And um, when we uh, started working with family histories, what we try to find is, first of all, uh, archival materials, objects that um, record their different um, experiences. So um, this is again um, from um, the Gishan Fund in the BC archives. Um, it really documents um, Lawrence Peter Gishan's really important contribution to the BC cattle industry through its formative years. So um, he served on um, many different commissions and did a lot of different work and really helped shape um, the cattle industry. And this was his cattle, which is still at the uh, Gishan family ranch today. And we had it on loan from the former Lieutenant Governor Judith Gishan. So this is one of the key objects. And they were telling us like uh, at the ranch, they run through, ran, run through so many saddles that it's difficult to, uh, keep tra trace of everybody's saddles. And uh, this was his um, briefcase. And um, it, um, of course, running the range required uh, hard work both on and off the saddle. And um, so this and a whole, this is also from the home ranch 
uh, collection, but uh, in our museum, we have a whole bunch of his journals because Mr. Guy Rose told us that he, uh, Lawrence Peter Gishan was seldom seen without uh, entering his um, their diaries um, daily to keep record of his uh, ranch operating skills. Um, so this is the photo of his children. And um, this is another photo of um, um, bringing cows home. So Uncle Bernie um, really was talking to us about how he had been programmed for ranch life since his childhood. So getting up at 6.30 in the morning and he extensively quoted um, Mr. Lawrence Gishang um, about how um, these different ranch ethics is something that's really, really precious to him. So he said, you know, for example, growing up in any kind of ranch is lucky that um, city folks wouldn't know. And um, Lawrence Gishan also said, if you're sleeping, you miss the best part of the day. So this is Lawrence with his uh, three and uh, four of his children. Um, so uh, the left, uh, the one on the left is uh, Uncle Bernie and uh, he's- e, Sorry, yeah. to, you can use your mouse to um, oh, yeah. show us which people you're talking Thank about. You. We can see that. Thanks. So this is um, Mr. Lawrence um, Gishan during the uh, war years and uh, Uncle Bernie at the time was in the Navy. And uh, these, this is um, the two daughters, um, Jackie and Ruth, and this, this is uh, Urban. He's, spoke uh, several languages because he works for the military in very different capacity. And that's somebody that, well, this is her later married. And this is uh, the ranch employee that uh, Hilda sent us. Just an image to show how family continued to grow after Lawrence's retirement. His son Gerard and his nephew Guy Rose, Hilda's husband, uh, husband um, they ran the Gerard Gishan Ranch and the Kilchina Cattle Company. And um, so this is the hotel that was operated by the family. And um, when I spoke to Mr. Guy Rose, he actually really talked about how Hilda was really instrumental in doing all these things and was very um, amazing in terms of how much Hilda was doing. He, she was cooking for, for the hotel, she was taking care of the children, she was taking care of the animals and doing all kinds of things. So Mr. Rose like didn't really say what he was doing when Hilda was doing all these things, but I was just so impressed with uh, all that Hilda was doing. And um, so this is um, the side of the family and um, I am going to stop talking now because um, we did um, share the family history in the uh, 2017 families exhibit. And um, before the exhibit opened to the public, we invited the Gishan family here to at the museum to actually see the exhibit before the public. And also they had a reunion. So this is Uncle Bernie and this is Mr. Rose, Guy Rose. And then this is uh, Hilda. And this is Carolyn, who is also on the panel, but you wouldn't be able to see her face today. Um, I just want to say that um, I have um, maintained contact with the family, and I was really, really, really sad when I found out that Uncle Bernie passed away and Mr. Guy Rose. But um, the family, um, I would say, is really, really strong for um, being there for each other. And it's a real honor to learn about the family history and share the lessons. But I'm gonna let Carolyn and Hilda talk. Hilda, do, do you wanna speak to the experience and that reunion at the museum? So E, first, if you would like to stop sharing, then we'll see Hilda when she's talking to us. Sure, just a sec. You want me to talk now? <clears throat> yes, okay. Well, that was a very special event and we were looking forward to it. After the first time we talked, we were approached by, by Zui and um, the few pictures that we were able to contribute and stories, but uh, looking forward to a family reunion and it was most successful. It was amazing. It wasn't just the, from the interior or down at the coast. It was also from Vancouver Island um, relatives. And yes, it is a widespread uh, family. And um, it was pretty, pretty wonderful. 
to be together and we continued celebrating afterwards. We took advantage of this very, very special day. And we are thankful also for your beautiful words just now, Zoe, uh, about the family, because it, um, yes, and I'm, all I can say is me and my family were proud to be a part of that family. It, um, and especially for me, because uh, 40, 65 years ago, I came as a post-war bride, came to Canada, and um, my husband was pretty brave to introduce a German girl at that time to the family, but at no time ever did I feel that uh, a resentment for anything at all. I was welcomed, and um, I felt, I felt, Yes, I felt good. So that's why I stayed in Canada. We got married. Uh, 60, it's, it would be 65 years ago this year, but I lost my husband a year ago, barely, not quite a year ago. And um, so, and Uncle Bernard, he was a special member of the family. He was the last of the living uncles. Um, the kids loved Uncle Bernie, and he actually was the only one they all got to meet. So, um, we relished lots of wonderful times together and the kids, I know my kids are very proud of being, you know, members of that family. And uh, I want to thank you for that opportunity to be able to express my, my, my feelings. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Hilda. Um, actually, um, Carolyn told us that the families found other branches after this, uh, after sharing what and um, what uh, was going on with um, this um, family history search for the Royal BC Museum. Um, Carolyn, do you want to speak to that? Sure. Um, one of the most interesting things that occurred because of the in uh, the event in the family, um, the day that. I think it was in May a few years ago when we went out to the exhibit that you put on, which was wonderful. And um, Guy and Hildy were staying across the street at the Empress and very kindly at the last minute put on a wonderful um, reunion of all of the members of the family who had shown up to see that exhibit. And there were people there that I had never met before who came from the Ray branch of the family and all had different last names. Um, I recall my Aunt Marseille saying to me one time when I was younger, if you scratch a British Columbian, you're going to find a Gishon. And, you know, I think that's true. They, there are so many families that are Gishons um, in British Columbia. It is astounding that, that we have such an extensive member, uh, membership. In 1993, uh, Guy and Hildy and um, my parents and the Ladner Gishans put on a family reunion that started in, at Ladner and went up to the ranch at Quilshena. And there were over a thousand people involved at some part of that event that were all Gishans. In fact, one of my favorite stories was my one of my cousins telling me that he and his, he was young, he was at UBC at the time, and he and his buddy were both going to a family reunion. And when they got to the reunion, they discovered they were cousins, but they had been friends long before that with no knowledge that they were cousins. So it's a very interesting and very, it's a great family to belong to. And it's wonderful that the museum has taken, taken the time and put your resources to helping us as a family to have a place to commemorate. Um, we're very, very lucky that, you know, you've chosen the Gishon family to follow so that in perpetuity, our descendants can also know about their history and it won't be lost. So thank you for that. Oh, I echo, echo what you said. Just thank you, beautiful. So as, as a curator of history at the museum, that's your role is identifying families like the Gishans and making these connections. How did you, how did you identify the Gishans at this place as, as being a significant family? Okay, so if I may, I'm going to share a few more family images. Um, 
I just, so in terms of the historical significance, like I said, um, um, Maurice Gibbard and um, Professor Jim Barman have both um, done the work when we were looking for this type of uh, connections, but also the type of connections that connect with the past and the present. And um, these type of families are honestly not very easy to find, but also the families have done a lot of work in preserving their memories. So the archival materials, for example, are with the, uh, there's an establishment of the Gishan Fund at the Royal Peace Museum and Archives. And, um, it is a really important um, collection in terms of BC's um, cattle industry development and also in terms of um, the ranching in, in, in the interior. And uh, the family history itself is amazing. I want to share this photo because it has um, both um, Uncle Bernie and Mr. Rose here. Um, I don't really know the gen. I think I was introduced to the gentleman in the middle, but I don't remember. But um, I just want to say I really, really miss them, and I am so sorry they're gone. But um, the Gishan Fund in the BC uh, archives and also the uh, collective memories of um, the family history will be continued, uh, sh continually shared uh, thanks to the efforts of the family. Um, her honor, Lieutenant Governor, uh, former Lieutenant Governor Judith Gishan also had a piece, and I had a piece about the Gishan family history in the publication that came out of the family's exhibit. And um, Uncle Bernie also asked me to um, visit him. And because when I conducted interview with him, um, my son was with me uh, throughout the whole time. He was sitting in the room. So Uncle Bernie just like kept calling him my little body. And then so uh, this is, um, so we, we did uh, the interview in 2016 and then 2017 was the exhibit where we saw him. And this is 2018 because he asked me to go visit him. So I got, um, I got a chance to actually visit that April in 2018. And that's, I didn't know that was the last time I would be seeing him. But I just want to say um, the family history itself is really significant. There's still a lot of connections that we are making and a lot of things that we wish to explore, explore further with the family. Um, but in this type of work, it's always like impossible without all these different um, 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 collaboration with the family, with the historians, with the, the uh, organizations like um, the the Francophone Historical Society of British Columbia. So like, I'm just really thankful for the opportunity of working with all of you. And, um, and I really hope that we can do further when we um, um, go back to our permanent gallery about um, these type of family histories that help us connect uh, the past, present, and the future. Cool. I have a question for uh, Hilda and Carolyn. Uh, during this time, you know, we're, although we are all staying in our homes, we're still reaching out to one another. And I find, you know, my uncles have been calling and I've talked to my sisters more. I call my mom every day right now, which I should probably do anyway, even when this is all over. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when we talk about stories, as my sister and one of my sisters and I especially remember things so differently. I will have one perspective of what happened and her version, I think you couldn't have even been there. That is so different than what I remember. Did you, did that come up in your experience uh, with Dr. Chung? Did you find there were family members who were like, I don't think it happened that way. Or was, was everybody on the same page? Uh, well, uh, what Caroline told the story, um, I experienced them. And um, I guess we did a lot of family things together. And, um, it um well my experience of course that is deeply ingrained i can you know go into detail and i came to this country and and uh, the family and uh, welcomed i have such beautiful memories and especially with carolyn's mum. she and i she was exactly 10 years older than me and passed away and i just loved her dearly we just we just bonded together beautiful so and, but the rest of the family, they were all kind and accommodating and um, I, 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 that welcome feeling I, I relished throughout my life, I guess. Yes. Okay. Oh. That's very special. 
It's very special. Carolyn, did you find most people were remembering things in the same way? Um, one of the things that is interesting for me about this project is that the focus of it for us starting was that we were looking at my grandfather's life. So Lawrence Gishon. And we were, I was in particular interviewing his children. So the living children, when I started, there were four living children. And so, or it's actually there were five, but I only interviewed four. Anyway, so I was looking at it from their memories of their father. Um, and then making sure that I recorded them. But you're right that in that their memories of the same events were very different. And um, it, particularly around events that had a lot of emotion to them. So for example, there is a wonderful photograph of um, Guy Rose's two sisters standing with my grandfather, Lawrence. Um, and they are standing at the road and they're watching the funeral procession go by of my grandmother's uh, coffin. And um, when, that, when that photo was described to me by my uncle Bernard, he, he, miss, he, didn't under, he didn't know who the two young girls were, who were his first cousins. He had so much emotion about the event. He thought that it was an entirely different event. Yet when my cousin, who was the young girl in the photo, described it to me, she remembered the color of her dress. She remembered the crying of the people on the road. She remembered how all of the, um, the women who had been good friends of my grandmother, who were um, Aboriginal and lived nearby, were on the side of the road giving their blessing as it went by. So it was such a different, you know, the same photo, but a totally different look at the same thing. Yeah, that must be a challenge for you, CE, when doing history. Uh, that there's certain there's some there's records of big things, events like a funeral, um, but maybe not of daily life so much. Although we saw some beautiful daily life photos, uh, thanks to Hilda, beautiful images. But how do you reconcile some of those events and different stories, CE? We don't try. We have. <laughs> Um, you have to approach these differences with a lot of sensitivities and when we work with communities and families if there are conflicting views we usually need to work very carefully with each of them and I don't think um, a lot of these are ready to be shared with the public mm -hmm. until uh, the families and the communities have um, some discussions or look into it and then feel ready to. And I think in most of the times we just um, really shared um, the common values first and then uh, we can follow up with um, more in-depth discussions. But uh, we do not have like concluding remarks about any one event or any one issue because uh, honestly, like my kids and I don't even agree on what we ate in <laughs> last, yeah, last year, last Easter or something. Well, we have just a couple of minutes left. Um, any last remarks or comments you want to say, Hilda? I'd like to add that um, Carolyn, more than <clears throat> with, with a real passion, she resurrected these memories by doing so much research and uh, showing pictures and showing them on the internet to help help her identify various family members, whoever could remember this and that. She did so much to resurrect um, memories of this family or happenings. And uh, she was, I admire her well, almost, she, she's a wonderful person, but this for this, I really have to admire her. She did wonderful, just an outstanding job. Thank you, Carolyn. Yeah, every family has like, like a knowledge keeper. They know where the records are, but they know which branches have um, what materials and what memory. So Carolyn and I uh, we really, really um, um, sh um, want to express our admiration for that work. Well, thank you very much. And if every family has a head that keeps this stuff together, every family also has a heart. And in my lifetime, that heart has been Hilda because nobody has held the family together and entertained more of the family members than, than she. And so thank you, Hilda, for doing that. And um, also thank you, 
all, you know, for everything that you're doing. And for those family members who are listening in and who might want to see more, there are hundreds and hundreds of scanned photographs that are now in the museum that they can go and look at. There are documents and letters and historical records that are just so interesting that you now have. And so um, I hope that people will take advantage of being able to, I understand it is possible to go online and see this. Mm -hmm. That's a, yeah, that's a wonderful segue. Thank you, Caroline. Yes, anyone who, the Gishans, uh, can find their family history there. Uh, if you have family in BC, a family who were born here, or who died here, got married here, you can probably find their records in the Royal B and the BC archives. And a lot of that is searchable online while we're at home now. Uh, there's birth, birth, death, and marriage records that you can access, which will give you names of family members sometimes where they were born, and it's a really great place to start. If you want a little help uh, with getting started, you can check out our learning portal. We do have a pathway called Finding Family that's got some tips and ideas uh, that can help you in your own family history searching. If you also, just to promote some other programs we have, if you've got some young people in your lives, let them know about RBC at Home Kids. It happens on Wednesdays at 11. These sessions feature a museum educator and a staff member sharing activities you can do at home. And yesterday we also premiered uh, RBCM at Home Outside. Uh, this program has one of our um, safe and intrepid uh, members out in the community, in the backyard, in the park, always far away from anybody else, though sharing some of the things that we can still enjoy and do outside. So while we wait for better days, I'm happy to have this way to stay connected uh, with our wider community. Thank you all for joining us and please take care of yourselves and one another. And and Caroline, a big, big hug from me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One more thing is um, the book uh, that came out of the family's exhibit has uh, um, Judy Skishan, the um, former lieutenant governor's um, personal <coughs> name. Uh, um, she's a real good storyteller and she's also the keeper of some of the uh, artifacts on the ho home range. Um, so if you can, please check that one out. I also have an article in there too, but uh, hers is like a first person narrative and she was running, she's been running the ranch uh, as a fourth generation. It's pretty amazing. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we'll stop the recording here. You don't have to leave just yet, Hilda, Carolyn, CE. If you want to chat, you are welcome uh, to do that. Thank you.